Uh, nice start there to the NEC. This, this is obviously exactly what you wanted. Yeah, I'll tell you what. Our kids played hard. And we talked about it after we lost to Hartford. And I have talked about this before. We're having a 20-day training camp to get ready for today. And to be honest, we didn't prepare a ton for Dartmouth and Iowa, per se. We were just worried about getting ourselves better over those 20 days. Now, in turn, I thought we played well against Dartmouth. Obviously, we thought we played very well and had a chance to beat Iowa. And then it carried over to today. And we've gotten a lot tougher and a lot grittier. And I had to change some things in my playing style. And try and I was still trying to learn this team for a while. And it took me a while to figure some things out. And the biggest thing is they continue to practice hard. They pe compete every day. And they're start starting to understand what it takes to win. We still have a long ways to go, but they're starting to understand what it takes to win. So I was really proud of their effort today against a good team. We know about Bash. We know about Adam. We, Joe has come on. But just talk about Juan and uh, the performance he gave today. Yeah, that was a new Juan Cardenas. Uh, he, he had played well in the Dartmouth game, sprained his ankle in practice two days later, couldn't play against Iowa. And then he came back the last two practices and finally looked like the Juan Cardenas we recruited. I don't know what happened in those five days off with his ankle sprain, but he looked like a different person today. Um, Is and anything he, that he gives you offensively kind of gravy? Because he looks like he's more of a defensive energy guy for you guys. He is right now. He does have some offensive ability, which you started seeing today. Some of the things he's done the last two games are things that I thought he had the ability to do. And I said from jump to my staff, we're not going to know how good he is until January. There's a curve with junior college kids to begin with when they go to the Division One level. And Juan didn't play last year. So he didn't play organized basketball for a year. The second half of the year, he wasn't even practicing. He was back home in South America because he had graduated from junior college. So he didn't play organized basketball for a long stretch of time. He got here in the fall with a sprained ankle. So he was behind the eight ball to begin with. And I always think with junior college transfers, the second half of the year, you start to learn what they are. And then in year two, they really become the player they can be. So I, I love the strides that he's making. Um, any update on that? He will go to the doctor on Monday. I mean, we're hopeful he'll be, get cleared next week. I'm not 100% sure. I know he's feeling better. I know rehab's going well. Um, and he'll see the doctor for the first time since the surgery. He's seeing the PA. He'll see the doctor for the first time on Monday. And we're pushing. We're getting close to that six-week mark, which was kind of the ballpark of what they were talking about. So we'll have a better idea on Monday. But he's getting healthier and is, is progressing well. It, I noticed it in the mm -hmm. Iowa game, and, and more so tonight, it looks like you found a way of playing without him, which is running down the clock a little bit and executing a little later. Uh, when did you decide that, that that was something that you wanted to try to do? Kind of going into the Dartmouth game, I knew we needed to kind of slow the possessions down a little bit. Um, I wasn't crazy about our shot selection, and we just weren't shooting the ball great from three. And when you're going to play as fast as I was letting us play, like I was okay with the shots we were taking, and I thought we were getting good shots, but we weren't making them. So for me, I had to make an adjustment and kind of try and figure out what was the right move to make with this team. And I thought we were pretty good in ball screen actions. And obviously, Sebastian Towns is a tough matchup. So I tried to clean a couple things up, put some new actions in to kind of play through those guys. And I think it's been effective and something, it's still a work in progress. So I think it's something we have a chance to continue to improve on. Does that last five minutes of the first half, Jared, reinforce how just important Bash Towns is? Because your offense was clicking. He says you scored like eight points in the final five minutes in the first half. Yeah, I mean, he's. <laughs> On both ends of the floor, he gives us so much. Obviously, you see it offensively. Defensively, he's our smartest guy. He's our best communicator. He's our best ball screen defender. So he goes to the bench, and Pat Harding's a tough kid who plays very hard, but Bash is a veteran. And Bash is, kind of leads our defense because he's so vocal and so smart and knows every position on the floor. So when you lose him, not only do you lose a guy who's an impact player, scorer, but you lose your smartest guy. So it's almost like for teams, sometimes when their point guard comes out of the game, that happens. For us, when Bash comes out of the game, that happens because I, I lean on him a lot on the defensive end with our communication, and I think our guys lean on him too because he's vocal, he talks them through stuff, and he has become the leader of this team. Another hero tonight, uh, Byron Hawkins. Yeah, Byron, Byron's a good player. He went through a little rut when he was struggling, and I knew that he was going to start playing better. He, he's a good player, and everyone goes through it at different times. He came back from Christmas with a great mentality and a great mindset, and has practiced really well. He's had the best stretch of practice that he's probably had all year. Um, and this week he was really good. I said to our guys before the game, I said, Byron's going to be good today. And he's going to have a good year for us. He went through some struggles, like a fifth-year transfer, coming into a new team, new style, third head coach. That stuff happens. So it takes a while sometimes for guys to feel out their role. And I think it's happened with a few of our guys that there's more of a comfort level of here's where I fit, here's my spots, here's where I can make a play, here's where I need to reverse the ball. They're, they're starting to learn those things. To shoot what you guys did at the line tonight, what does that say about your collective focus? Yeah, I and mean, I think it's great. I think we put a lot of time into it, and we shoot a lot. We get a lot of shots up. We shoot a lot of free throws, and 
our guys stepped up and made them when they counted. You know, it's easy to make them in practice when there's no pressure, but our guys stepped up and made them when they counted. And this was a big game for our guys mentally. Like, we were locked in today. I felt very comfortable going into this game. I didn't know what the outcome was going to be, but I knew we were prepared to play. And I could tell by our guys the last two days, today in shoot around, today in warm ups, they were locked in. So I'm not remotely surprised. Like, I said before the game to people, I said, I'm very comfortable with where we're at. Was the ball going to go in? I don't know. But our guys are ready to play. And they showed that they were. And this is a big step for them. They won three games last year. They won one conference game. So this are two conference games. Whatever. This is a big step for them against a team that has the most wins in our league. You know, St. Francis was playing the best basketball of anybody in the NEC. So I think it was a statement today. And hopefully our guys will, you know, 44 hours, we got to tip it off again and play the team that went to the NCAA tournament last year. So that should be another thing that our guys should be motivated with the chip on their shoulder and a game they should be excited for. How much are you kind of stress defending the home court, too? Yeah, I mean, I, anywhere I've been, that's the biggest thing. You have to defend your home court and then find a way to get some wins on the road. We've done a pretty nice job at home so far. Obviously, on the road, not so much. That's going to be the next step for this program. But we just played We just played the team who, coming into this game, was the best team in the league, per se, based on record. Tomorrow, uh, Saturday, we're playing a team who went to the NCAA tournament last year. So those are the games you have to win at home. You have to protect your home court. I think our guys have a comfort level in this gym because, let's face it, I haven't been in this gym a lot, more than they've ever been in the gym in their life before. So there should be a comfort level. Like we felt in other programs I've been, we put so much work in, we're on the floor so much and put so much time in our gym that there, sh there should be a comfort level there. And I think our guys have that right now. Just talking about staying with it, you know, give St. Francis a lot of credit. They punched, you guys punched, and how you guys stayed tough to the end there? Mm, the thing that like, make it stay was the defense. We play. I think we play a hard defense. We play really tough. Like we got tough them, and I think that's what gives us the the key to the win. Bash, how much does the intensity sort of flip up now that you know, this NEC play? Here? Um, well, you know, we was looking forward to NEC play the whole time. You know, we was just trying to figure things out when we were in non-conference. But um, now that it's here, man, I've, I've been very excited. You know, I've been uh, definitely stepping up to the leader, being a leader in the uh, locker room, and uh, I just been getting my guys pumped all the way until this moment, you know. Our training camp was over, you know, I had day 20 a couple of days ago, and um, it's here now, so everybody's excited, and we're, we're definitely going to play hard. You had a good deal. You had an offensive rebound off, off one of the few missed free throws you made, and it led to an Adam Grant three. Just talk about the energy that he brings defensively, how it kind of feeds off everybody. Oh, yeah, we definitely – it took Juan a little while to adjust, but – um. You know, he's definitely making a lot of improvement, definitely on the defensive end and the offensive, offensive end. You guys haven't even seen what he can do, man. He, he does a lot in practice. So once he gets the defensive down, he's definitely going to open up his offensive tendencies. And um, just there's no there's no ceiling for him, man. He's definitely going to show you guys more and uh, what he's capable of doing. Juan, Coach talked about making some changes throughout the non-conference, changing the way he wanted you guys to play, changing the way that he coached. Um, what were maybe a, a couple of the most important things that he might have done that have helped you guys to this point? I would say that, like, one of the things that he done was, like, keep me uncomfortable. Like, he never, like, let me, like, go away. Like, if I do something wrong, he always going to tell me. And I think that's the, the, the most important because he always had my back. <laughs> it was tough. It was definitely tough. Um, since, to be honest, since Grasso's been here, it's been a training camp. It's definitely been like boot camp style. But, um, you know, we definitely needed it. It made us a better team, obviously. Uh, during the process of the training camp, we had a lot of time off in between games. So uh, it, it was tough, but uh, it made uh, it made us tougher as a team. And, you know, we're going to out we're gonna out tough everybody in NEC. And that's, the, that's the point that uh, Grasso was trying to make. So uh, it, it worked. It worked. And I'm not even going to knock him. It, it definitely worked for us. Um, we're just always going to – the nothing's going to change what we do in practice. So, you know, coach is definitely not we, – tomorrow we're going to forget about this game. We're going to be worried about the next game. I don't even know who we play next. But uh, it's just going we're just going to take one game at a time, one possession at a time, and just figure it out from there. Um, I don't think we're going to get big-headed. Um, I think everybody on this team is very humble. And uh, we're just going to take one game at a time, man. And this sky's the limit for us. And um, we're definitely going to shock a lot of people. If they're asleep, we're going to wake them up.